All right, so we're going to finish the quadrilateral unit with trapezoids. Trapezoids are not parallelograms, but they are quadrilaterals. So at the top of the page, it says that a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one or only one pair of opposite sides parallel. So if you think about the proof and you had to prove a parallelogram, you do have to do or calculate the slopes of all four sides because you want to show that only the slopes of one pair of opposite sides are equal and therefore parallel. Okay? The parallel sides of a trapezoid are called bases. So in these three trapezoids here, This side here is a base. These are the parallel sides. And the right trapezoid, these are the bases and the parallel sides. And in the isosceles trapezoid, here are the bases and the parallel sides. The other sides are called legs, but we just refer to them as the non-parallel sides. So we have the parallel sides, non-parallel sides. And the altitude is a perpendicular segment drawn from any point on a base connecting and drawn to the other base so that it's perpendicular, okay? So let's go through the properties. Do all trapezoids have the bases parallel? Yes. yes. By definition. Do all trapezoids have legs that are not parallel? Yes. yes. The non-parallel sides are also called legs. Do all trapezoids have legs congruent? No, no only the isosceles. Now, angles along a leg, so I'm just going to put some dots there, so that would be an angle like these two. Okay, those are angles along a leg. I'll use X's, those two, so these two, those two, these two, those two. Are they supplementary? No. I'm just kidding. Yes, because they're actually the interior angles, right, of two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So here's the two parallel lines, here's your transversal. These are same side interior. And same side interior are always supplementary. So that's true in any trapezoid. So angles along a leg supplementary, yes. Base angles congruent. Base angles are angles along a base. So that would be something like those two angles. Do they look to be congruent? No. You can look at that base. You can look at the other base. Are they congruent there? No. Would they be congruent in, so is this angle congruent to that angle? Yes. So base angles are only congruent in the isosceles. In diagonals congruent, they're only congruent in one. You can draw the diagonals or sketch them if you want. They're only congruent in one of the three trapezoids. Which one? Isosceles. Isosceles. And then has two right angles. That's going to be your right trapezoid. Okay. The congruent triangles in the picture in reference to the isosceles trapezoid. So I'll move it up. So if you have a highlighter and want to highlight or just darken it, triangle BCD. So BCD is this one. Oh, you're right. BCD is this one. But it looks like I did highlight. I was just answering the question. I did highlight the other triangle that's congruent, right? So BCD uh, would be congruent this one here. The order of the letters? Well, I heard a couple different things. What should they be? CBA. Congruent triangles, so one of the ways they ask this is which triangles have the same area, right? If they're congruent, they're going to have the same perimeter and same area. Right? And then the last one, triangle BAD. So tracing it, I'm, going to, I'm starting at B, going down A, across to D. That would be congruent to, I'll highlight this one, the other big one. 
And then in writing in reference to the letters, that would be CDA. These triangles are which type? Do they have any sides congruent whatsoever? No. So they are scalene. Given trapezoids C, D, E, F, so they'll, I don't want to say always in case there is a scenario, but they should tell you the sides that are parallel. So C, D is parallel to F, E. Now on the last quiz, some people miss the ratio part of the question. So it says if the measure of F and C are in the ratio 1 to 4. So you have to look at it, it's respected to the order, so think of it as F to C, so F is first, so that's the 1x, okay, so F would be 1x, and then C, 1 to 4 would be 4x, that's a ratio of 1 to 4, and then those two angles along that leg are the property, supplementary, so 4x plus 1x or 4x plus x is 5x equals 180, divide 180 by 5, and x is equal to 36. Find the measure of angle f. Well, f was the 1x, so you just want to make sure you go back to the question and it's the measure of angle f is equal to 36 degrees. Number two, find the value of x so that the trapezoid PQST is isosceles. Well, if you want the trapezoid to be isosceles, and they gave you the measurements of Q, angle Q, and angle S algebraically, what must be true about their angle measures if you want it to be isosceles? They have to be equivalent. So 2x squared, so we're going to solve a quadratic, plus 19 equals 4x squared minus 13. So I'm going to get a set equal to 0, it's a degree 2, so I'm going to put the 0 on this side and subtract 2x squared from 4x squared, so we get 2x squared, and then negative 13 minus 19, so to subtract the 19 we get negative 32. So of the binomial I'm going to factor out a greatest common factor of 2 first, so it's 2 times x squared minus 16, and then I'm going to factor the binomial x squared minus 16. 16. Your teacher may have called this dots, or the difference of two perfect squares. When you factor a binomial where both of the terms are perfect squares separated by um, subtraction, it's going to be x plus 4, x minus 4. So the two roots for this factor, we have x equals negative 4, and then x equals 4. So in order to decide if you need to reject the negative, we have to go back to the question. So we go back to the question and you're squaring x, and then in this case multiplying by 2, adding 19, in that case multiplying by 4, subtracting 13, do we need to reject the negative? No. Whether you plug it in and square a positive or negative 4, you're going to get the same number, 16, right? So find the value of x, x is positive or negative 4. So given that JL, well if we go over the picture, JL is a diagonal, and given the length of KM, which is also a diagonal because they gave me the two parallel sides there, so those must be the bases. Find the value of Z so that the trapezoid is isosceles. What must be true about the diagonals if the trapezoid is going to be isosceles? They have to be congruent. So we set 5Z plus 3 equal to 9z minus 12. I'm going to add the 12, we get 15, subtract 5z, that's 4z. Now 15 is not a multiple of 4, so we're going to get a decimal. Divide by 4 and z is, well 4 times 3 is 12, so it's 3 point, what's the difference between 12 and 15? So it's 3 fourths or 0.75. We have isosceles trapezoids C, D, E, F, and number 4 that have bases of length 6 and 12, which are noted and an altitude of 4. Find the length of C, D, and E, F. Well, if it's isosceles, I know these two lengths are the same. 
So when I want to solve this question, I'm going to draw another altitude, but I'm drawing right here so that I split the trapezoid up into two right triangles and a, what's the quadrilateral in the center? A rectangle, because that's 6, 4. So this would be 4, and this dimension down here is 6. Opposite sides of a rectangle. And then these two segments are also congruent. So 12 minus 6 is 6, and then you divide it equally, and this is 3. In the right triangle, this is a triple. If you haven't memorized your triples yet, it does save you some time. Does anyone know the 3, 4, 5? So CD is equal to EF, which is equal to... In number five, we need to find the area of the trapezoid. Well, if you go to your reference sheet from the state, the trapezoid formula is not there. Okay, does anyone know what the area of a trapezoid is? Jack? Plus, you add the bases together, so it's one half the sum of the bases times the height. Now, given one base is eight, so one half of eight plus, let's find the other base. It is a right trapezoid, so because of this angle of 45, I'm going to draw another altitude. So that gives me the 45, 45, 90. And I know that if the hypotenuse is 4 radical 2, each leg is 4. And because I created a rectangle here, if this is 8, this is 8, which will give me this base of 12. And then the height of the trapezoid is the segment connecting the two bases, 4. So we have 1 half of 20 times 4, which is how many? units squared, 40. Good. And the last one before we finish with a coordinate geometry proof is one that's going to involve some trigonometry. So we're told we have trapezoid A, B, C, D. So you have a calculator, double check that you're in degree mode. Our parallel sides are DC and AB. A is already labeled as 90, C is already labeled as 100, and CDB is already labeled as 46. We're going to find the length DC to the nearest inch, so I'm going to call that X. So we're going to find one of the bases. Our trig toolbox contains what? What's in our trig toolbox? Yeah, Jack? Sine, uh, cos, cosine, and cosine. So sine, cosine are tangent ratios. Yep, what else is in there? Law of, Law of sines, and last. And law of cosines. So if I need to find x, x right now is a part of this triangle right here. Is there any way to find that third angle? Because the interior angle sum of a triangle is 180. What's the third angle? 34. Okay, within that, can we use Sokotoa? No, we have no right angle. What do we need for law of sines and cosines again? So for law of cosines, we need all three sides, right? The A, the B, and the C. We can find this side, I'll call Y, because what do we have over here? a right triangle and we've got a side right here of 212 and we can find y and then but still would I be able to find side CB? Well, I could if I knew if it was isosceles, right? Because if it was isosceles I could find DA and then I would have CB because the non-parallel sides are congruent but I don't know it's isosceles. 
What do we need for law of sines? Two angles, two sides. Well, if I found y, would I have my two sides? Yeah. And I have my two angles? Yeah. yeah. So we have to start by finding y. So I'll use the color, this orangish yellow. So within that, well, we need an angle somewhere. Well, other than the 90. We need one of the acute angles. Which angle is 44? Well, here's two parallel sides, right, cut by a transversal. So if this is 46, this is 46. And then the other, the complement of 46 is what? Is it 34? Let's start with first, let's start with 46 plus 4 is what? 50. They need to add up to what? The two angles. What do they need to add up to? 90. So this is, that gives me 50. How many more to get to 90? 50 plus 40, right? Is it 50 plus 40? On your calculator, do 90 minus 46. That's 44. So I was finding the other acute angle. So we can use whatever angle you want. You want to use the 46 degree angle or you want to use the 44? 46. So if I'm using the 46, we have the side adjacent, which is which ratio? Sine, cosine, or tangent. And hypotenuse. We have adjacent, ka. So it's cosine of 46 degrees equals 212 over y. Multiply both sides by y first to start. So y cosine of 46 degrees equals 212, then divide by the cosine of 46 degrees. Don't forget the new function on your calculator is if you had me update, you go alpha link or alpha x, it brings up the fraction key, and then type in your 212 in your numerator and the cosine of 46 in the denominator. And we get 305.1859, so let's copy that down. One eight five nine eight six four. Okay, now I'm gonna grab the red and we're gonna do law of sines. Law of sines is the side, so x over the sine of the angle opposite that side. So which angle measure is opposite side x? 34. And then our y, so 305.1859864, over what side's opposite y? The sine of 100. So we need to do our cross product, and it's going to be x sine of 100 equals 305.1859864 sine of 34. And the last step to get x by itself would be to do what? Divide by the sine of 100. So on the calculator, we should still have a decimal in there to work with. Yep, so I need to multiply it by the sine of 34, and then divide by the sine of 100. And we have to round, right, to the nearest inch. So that's going to be approximately how many inches? 173. Oh, the construction. So let's see how you did. If you were stuck, to do the construction, what I would first do is start by extending um, ML. It has to come from vertex K. So it has to come from vertex K 
open up your compass. The perpendicular line construction is an arc and an X. So you do the arc and the X. The X really should go below. You can do it above, but just keep in mind if a teacher that doesn't teach geometry was grading your regions, I mean, they should realize when we explain things to start, but the key, the rubric is going to show the model response is going to look like that. And then through that point of intersection, okay, so mine's close. And then I'm going to go back, whoops, and dot it. Everything outside should be a dotted. And that's it. How'd you do? 100%? Good. All right, the proofs, and that's it. If you flip and actually have it side by side, you can see a lot of the proof calculation I've already got done for you. I just want to go through the process of it and how you write up your conclusion, because that's where you guys really need to focus, is how you write up that conclusion piece. So let's start with, whoops. The ways, that was from last block, the ways to prove or show the different type of trapezoids. So if you just want to start by showing it's a trapezoid using coordinate geometry, which formula would you use? What's the definition of a trapezoid? Only one pair of opposite sides are parallel. Two would be a parallelogram. So to show that only one pair of opposite sides are parallel is which formula? To show parallel, slope. And are you trying to show that your slopes are equivalent or negative reciprocals? Equivalent. So we want to show that the slopes of only one pair of opposite sides are equal. Okay, so just the fact that we have one pair of opposite sides parallel is enough to show. Now, notice if you want to show it's a right trapezoid and isosceles, you first have to prove it's a trapezoid. So what's the difference between a trapezoid and a right trapezoid? It has to have one right angle. So you need to show that there is one right angle. Using which formula? Well, that would be easy, right? So is that any additional calculation? No. So we're going to use slope again. And we want to show that the slopes of what types of sides? Adjacent, or you can call them consecutive. They mean the same thing. So you want to show that the slopes of a pair of consecutive sides are equivalent or negative reciprocals? Negative reciprocals. And I'm going to abbreviate. Because the negative reciprocals is going to give you perpendicular lines, which gives you the right angle. And then last, there's two ways to show isosceles. Yeah. Specifically, which two sides? It has to be the the, 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 legs. the legs or the non-parallel. So we can show that these non-parallel sides are congruent, or what? Is there any way using slope, distance, or midpoint to show angles are congruent? 
If they're both right angles, right? All right angles are congruent. Yeah, but that's not going to be typically the case. You can also show what's true about the diagonals. Yeah, we can show that the diagonals are congruent. Okay, both ways, so I'm just going to draw a line here. Both ways involve which formula? To show congruency, distance. Okay, and then I'm going to draw a line. Um, but I do want to put the formula, though, because I noticed on the quarterly assessment, people have the formula for distance incorrect, some people. What is the formula? D times 2 minus x1 plus squared plus x2 minus no? y2 minus Yeah. If you reverse, if you reverse this, I would never take off because you're going to get the same answer, right? What I have been seeing though is those subscripts as exponents. I've seen plus signs here instead of the difference of your x and y coordinates. Um, so just make sure you have it copied down correctly. It'd be okay. Yeah. So our last question for the semester in our notes is to prove A, that the quadrilateral is a trapezoid, and B, it's also isosceles. So notice it's sketched. I've got it drawn for you. I would encourage you to always do that on the readings as well. And I also have it laid out that we use slope. We calculate the slopes of all four sides to show that the slopes of only one pair of opposite sides is the same. So what is the final answer for the slope of CD? one-third, because we get negative one over negative three, which is a positive one-third. What about the slope of AB? Three over nine, which is also one-third. Notice I put these two, after I drew it, I put the slopes right next to each other. And then the slope of AD is seven over one, which is seven. And then CB uh, is 5 over negative 5, which is negative 1. So remember, when you do the write-up, this is the final coordinate geometry proof for this unit. I think maybe the last type for the rest of the year. Because we don't see them in circles, solids, transformations, or similarity, I don't think. I think this is it for coordinate, the types of different coordinate geometry proofs. You can write one long paragraph, but I'm a math teacher. Less writing is always best for me. I like to make little notes. So here, these equal slopes tell me, um, I'm going to do the therefore, that CD is parallel to AB. And then non-equal slopes tells me that AD is not just put a slash through it. It's not parallel to CB. And then the property, I'm going to use the property now. I'm going to say since um, there is only one pair of opposite sides that are what? Parallel. Parallel. Since there is only one pair of opposite sides parallel, quadrilateral, ABCD is a trapezoid. So when you write your conclusion, you're stating the property that you just proved to be true. Okay, so this is part A. It's a trapezoid. Now to show it's isosceles, which method did I use? Are we showing the non-parallel sides congruent or the diagonals? I have us calculating DA and CB. The non-parallel non sides are congruent. Is it OK on the state test that I didn't actually show the substitution and the difference? Would that be OK for you on the test? It would be. But if you say I got one of these wrong, would we have any work to go back to to get you partial credit? No, so it's always good to show as much work as possible, but that would be okay. 
And then this ends up being the square root of 50 as well as CB is also the square root of 50. Because that's not your final answer, you do not need to reduce it. But if you did, what would be the final answer to the square root of 50? 5 radical 2. Good. So I'm going to make note here, equal lengths, therefore DA is congruent to CB. And my conclusion, since the non-parallel sides of trapezoid, A, B, C, D, are congruent, then it is isosceles. So the property, again, is the non-parallel sides are congruent.